Shanahan. You guys are all smiles. You guys are all filthy. Uh, <laughs> tell me a little bit about that energy inside that locker room following the win. I mean, it was amazing energy in the locker room. Um, you know, like being 6-0, uh, a new feel for a lot of the guys in there and you know just goes to show like what kind of work those guys put in and how much it means to those guys and um, you're right man it was filthy you know <laughs> like coming in there everybody's jerseys all dirty you know we got Mike Person's jerseys dirty my jerseys dirty Weston Richburg's jerseys dirty I mean like it's just like crazy like that type of football game going out there and then coming back in the locker room with the win and celebrating with the guys. It's just an awesome feeling. Yeah, it was a muddy game, but also I'm going to put a little of the blame on you guys. You guys came back a little <laughs> muddy with like the post game celebration sliding across the field. <laughs> Were you involved in any of the madness going on on the field? I was not. I was already <laughs> so dirty from the game. I was like, I, I man, I just cannot wait to hop in the shower after this because I had dirt everywhere <laughs> <laughs> let's not talk about it let's just run you guys the highlights and take a look at the 49ers win over the Redskins in week second or week seven it was ugly the 49ers headed out east to take on the Redskins Washington 11 straight run plays by Adrian Peterson and Wendell Smallwood put the Redskins in 49ers territory well you know how it goes wind and rain make for a missed field goal no good Jimmy Garoppolo making 49ers fans everywhere gasp for air the quarterback scrambles and he picks up 11. Garoppolo again putting the Redskins on skates, avoiding sacks, scrambles for another game. He nearly outran the 49ers running backs in the first half. Another fourth down stop, no problem for the 49ers defense. Julian Taylor came up big with the stop against Adrian Peterson. A couple drives later, D Ford registers his fourth and a half sack on the year. Second half, Garoppolo, Kendrick Bourne, who shakes loose for a 28 yard game. Now Redskins ball, uh-oh, Eric Armstead with the third down sack that's three and a half on the year. Now Garoppolo, he needs three yards. Well, he gets 40 right in the hands of Richie James, the biggest play of the game for both teams. You can see the rain pouring. 49ers settle for a field goal to put three on the board. Game-changing play in the third quarter. Quan Alexander punches out the ball from Adrian Peterson. Julian Taylor again. This time he recovers the loose ball. Big game for the second year defensive lineman. All right, now we're going to head to the fourth quarter. Kendrick Bourne again gets inside the 49 in the Redskins 10. Robbie Gold puts the 49ers up six zip. George Kittle coming up clutch again on third down to move the chains. The 49ers look to gold again for the 49ers the final score of the game. Now look, Redskins trying to make something happen, and you know how that ends. Nick Bosa slides into 6-0. and 49ers defense holds the Redskins scoreless, the first shutout by the team since week one of 2016. That game was actually against the Rams. It was 28 to zip. Case Keenum, nine passes on the day, 77 yards. Third game this season with fewer than 200 passing yards allowed. They call it football weather. In Detroit, you played a game inside of a dome. I mean, of course, you traveled. But the 49ers have been relatively lucky when it comes to the weather, uh, albeit that game in 2017 against the Philadelphia Eagles. But uh, do you ever recall playing a game like this in these type of conditions? No, I have not. <laughs> honestly, I haven't played a game like that since probably high school, yeah. honestly, playing in Chicago. And man, it was that was definitely one to remember. It felt like like when you're younger and you're playing in the rain and then mom gets mad like because you get your clothes dirty. Exactly. Was it like that? It was, that was the exact kind of game. You know, <laughs> like all your jerseys dirty, your pants dirty. You know, back in high school, we had to like wash our own clothes. So like we, my mom would have been very upset with me back in the day. But, you know, good thing we got awesome uh, awesome equipment staff here to take care of. I was, I was just going to say that. <laughs> Shout out to the 49ers equipment staff. That is a tall task. I'm sure it was not very fun. The win was fun, but coming back to clean the jerseys, not so much. So in a game like this, it has to be a struggle to pass and run block, but you guys came back in the second half. What kind of adjustments did you guys make at halftime? Uh, I mean, we went in um, in halftime. Uh, Shanahan talked to us. He was like, hey, guys, we're going to go just gonna go out there and do what we do. Um, you know, obviously the weather wasn't ideal or wasn't you know, anything that we expected, but uh, we knew what kind of game it was going to be coming out in the pregame and saw how the field was, the condition of the field. And, um, you know, kind of Shanahan just uh, said to us, like, hey, we're going to go out there, we're going to run the ball, we're going to do what we do, and, you know, it's going to stick on our assignments and, you know, it's going to keep chipping away, especially in the run game.
The 49ers offense was able to get some plays going in the second half. A couple big throws by Garoppolo, oh, which yeah. is the perfect time to take us into your origin DNA of a play. Lakin, you have the Telestrator. I'm going to let you play coach. Let's run <laughs> through a couple of the plays from Sunday. Let's kick it off with that 40 yarder to Richie James. All right, let's go right here. That's me right there. If they can't see me. There you are. <laughs> but right here, we got a slide protection uh, slide towards my side. So Weston's going to slide towards me. Um, right here, we can see they're playing single high here. Um, they play it through right here, wide open. So when they play a zone like that, there's always a small pocket um, in the field where, the, you know, with good protection, giving quarterback time, Jimmy does a great job of finding that pocket. And look at that, there's nobody around him. So when he gets the ball, not only does he get the ball to move to change, but he's going to get yards after this. So just play it, play it through. Look at that. And great blocking by our receivers this is one thing our receivers do, man. They love they love blocking and they love selling out for the guys. So awesome game right here. Just a little uh, extra attention to the pass for right here. We've got Weston sliding our way. I mean, it was just awesome protection. And you know, when you give Jimmy time like that, you know, give him time to get guys open, man, this just shows you what we can do. Perfect. Let's jump right into the next play. Uh, Kendrick Bourne. Coming down with the reception. Run us through that one. So right here, um, you know, like I mentioned, we were chipping away at the run game. They're going to put eight guys in the box. So right here, the play through. We had a little run action here, but uh, Garoppolo keeps it right here. Kendrick wide open. So when you guys get eight guys in the box like that, we, we got we to gotta get guys open. And Kendrick does a great job getting open right here. And it was just an awesome design in the play. And that's supposed to show, like, what kind of scheme Shanahan got, got cooking up for all these teams, man. He's a mastermind when it comes to the game scheming. And we were just going and see, like, those guys playing out of position. And Kendrick's just wide open. Big play by him. And, you know, just uh, I'm so proud of him. That's the strategy he's taking over the weeks. Yeah, definitely. Kendrick, another big catch. Uh, let's go ahead and run through that next play. Go right here again. You know, scared of the run. So they're going to pile up the box. And we go again with another run action. Guys out of position. Kendrick does a great job. Wide open again. Beautiful. See right there. I honestly, live, I thought nobody touched him. So I was like, get up, get up, get up, go score, go score. And guys out there blocking for him. He's getting up, trying to finish. Good finish by Kendrick right here. To the naked eye, I agree. I thought he wasn't touched going in for that one. I, I could have promised you that one was a score. I, I thought it was a score too. I mean, going back and looking at this angle, you know, uh, run action right here. Great blocking up front. Jimmy has a time. Perfect throw. I mean, if you pause it right there, I mean, come on. It's not enough evidence. <laughs> it's not enough evidence to turn that back, but they called it. Throw the flag. They, they call it complete, <laughs> you know, and, you know, they saw something that I didn't, so. All right, all right. That's why they get paid the big bucks. <laughs> Lakin, um, I got another play for you. You might not have been in on this play, but I feel like you can give us a pretty good analysis of what happened on the final play of the game. Uh, Redskins ball, Nick Bosa comes in, gets his first sack of the game. Um, can you run me through Man. a little bit of his uh, form here? I feel like you're an expert <laughs> on this. I mean, uh, obviously a great player. This kid is amazing at what he does. Um, not only him, but all those guys up front. I mean, wow, they got D Ford, they got Buckner, they got Eric Armstead, and they got Bosa in there. I mean, like all those guys in there rushing the quarterback, it is that's that's a, that is a unstoppable force. Absolutely. So like this this guy right here, oh my god, he's so good. He's such a good player. And he obviously makes a sack. I'm gonna have to go back here. He makes a sack, but not only the sack. But look at this form. Look at that, look at that form. form. Look at that. Look at that. There kid. you go. <laughs> it's a kid out there enjoying what he does. And he's just like, and all the guys around him. After that, we were all sliding. Look at that. Look at everybody sliding on the field. Everyone's happy. You know, we went out there, the game ceiling sack. It was just an awesome way to end the game. Just sliding into 6 0. <laughs> sliding into 6 0. You can't lie, and you can't deny it. Nick Bosa is definitely someone that's very fun to watch. You're talking about Bosa sliding onto the field. I've got one more for you, Lakin. <laughs> How about this one right oh, here? Man. Can you run me through your teammate, Mike Person? This photo has gone <laughs> viral. I, I haven't seen anything like this. Look at the face. Look at the jersey. Now, this is just an epic photo. I mean, credit to whoever took it. 
and it was just epic. And when you talk about like a, a football player and the grittiness of an offensive lineman, this photo sums it all up. I mean, just look at that grit. Look at that. Look all at the dirt. Face. Look at this look at face. That. Look at everything. Like, we, 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 we talk about it after the game. Like, we're putting this photo up in the offensive line room. Oh, yeah. And this is what it means to be. This is everything of what it means to be an offensive lineman. Battling in the trenches, getting down and dirty. This, this is perfect. Mike Person, the poster child of what it means to be an O lineman. That is your origin DNA of a play. Well done, Coach Lakin. I like that a lot. <laughs> so Joe Staley in week two, he goes out with a broken fibula. Mm -hmm. Two weeks later, Mike McGlinchey, he's out. You look to rookie Justin School, third year tackle Daniel Brunskill. Of course, people are going to panic, especially when you're playing guys, say, week six, you've got Aaron Donald and the Los Angeles Rams. And then last week you have Montez Sweat, Jonathan Allen in week seven. But it feels like you guys haven't skipped a beat at all. What have you seen with these two guys in place of with big shoes to fill in place of Joe Staley and Mike McGlinchey? I mean, big shoes to fill indeed for sure. I mean, especially with Joe, you know, I've been playing for as long as I can remember, man. And, you know, Mike McGlinchey, you know, those guys are very hard to replace, but, you know, uh, we got guys coming in like school. We got guys coming in like Brunskill. Those guys, they practice really hard and they're extremely detailed uh, when it comes to the playbook. So I see them in there asking questions every day in the meeting rooms, trying to get better for, it's for the team. And, you know, when coaches see that in guys, they have no problem uh, putting them in to step up and fill in for a role. So, you know, um, unfortunate what happened with Joe and Mike, but these guys, they did a great job of, of filling in for them. This Sunday is actually – not just a game against the Panthers, but it's also National Tight End Day. Are you aware? <laughs> National Tight End Day. I think, I think someone mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's turned into a league-wide thing. But I actually spoke with George Kittle this week, and he feels that tight ends are an overlooked group. I want to let him know I wholeheartedly disagree. I feel like it's O-linemen. But when you look at this group and you guys, how you continue to work together as a unit despite injury, what does it say about this group of guys? I mean, it just goes to show like what type of work this group of guys put in the offseason. You know, uh, especially we have guys like Weston, you know, went down last year. I went down last year with injury. Um, we got guys um, coming back with us, uh, Mike, Port Mike Person. You know, those, those group of guys right there and uh, just the continuity we have in the offensive linemen. It goes to show like the standard that we have in the offensive line play. It, it's, it's very high for ourselves. And, you know, when we got guys coming in like school and Brunskill, they see that and they, they want to be a driving factor for that standard. So, I mean, like, it's just shows to show, like, what kind of work we put in. It's, I, it's phenomenal. I know that you're really good friends with Joe Staley, and even Joe brought in Justin School to his house <laughs> once he went down. Awesome veteran leadership right there. But how have you seen not just Joe, but also Mike remain involved despite not being on the field? Yeah, I've, well, Mike, Mike's always involved. He's like in the group text every day, you know, <laughs> talking to us. He's in their meetings every day, talking to us. And he's help, trying to help coach these guys, too. You know, uh, whatever question uh, Dan Brunskill has, whatever question school has, he's there to communicate with them. You know, uh, unfortunately, he couldn't travel with us. You know, I had the, the surgery or whatever. But, um, you know, he's always communicating with us. And that's just, that's just show how tight-knit our group is. You know, like, our guys, we get along great with each other. And that goes that goes to show on the way we play, you know, like there's five guys out there. And, and if they're if you're not tight like that, if you're not brothers out there, then man, I don't know. <laughs> you talk about this group chat, just given the different characters you guys have on this <laughs> offensive line, that's got to be one interesting group chat. Uh, it, it is. It is. It definitely gets uh, <laughs> it definitely gets. It definitely is interesting. That's all I can say. Interesting. Enough said right there. <laughs> so as this, this team keeps gelling and improving, a lot of the credit has to go to your O-line coach, John Benton. How does he keep everyone on the same page and keep things rolling? Uh, as it goes to show the standard, you know, um, he understands the standard. Um, and he is the primary driving force for the standard as well. You know, um, he sees the potential that we have. And, you know, his, his job as a coach to maximize that potential, especially with the guys that we have in our room. You know, we have a bunch of great guys in our room, a bunch of great athletes. And, um, you know, he's done a really good job, you know, especially me personally, the past couple of years of coaching me into the offense and, you know, making sure that, um, I'm on everything technically, you know, uh, as a player. 
We can't talk about Sunday's win without talking about the performance of the 49ers defense, which is the oh. perfect time for your Yahoo Fantasy performer of the game. It's the 49ers defense. <laughs> uh, defense pitched a shutout. Defense just allowed 154 net yards of offense, an average of 3.8 yards per play for Washington. Through seven weeks, the 49ers defense is allowing 133.5 passing yards per game, a rarity in the NFL, three sacks, on Sunday, the third straight game, this team has posted three or more sacks. Like, and I'm gonna toss this to you. How much fun has it been for you to watch these guys on defense? It's 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 super fun. I mean, we all knew about it in training camp, you know. Like, uh, and that's good to say. Like the the standard of those those guys. Uh, Coach Kerser did a great job of coming in and creating that standard for them, and um, that just goes to show like what they did in camp. You know, offensive line, defensive line, we battled through our camp. And, you know, when we see these guys, we're like, these guys are going to be a, a driving factor in this league. So we knew it coming in, but it's just awesome to see it all play out during the year so far. Um, those guys going out there, they're creating great opportunities for us offense and putting us in great field position. And, you know, it's just fun to watch. And when you play complimentary football like that, you know, you're just, it's, it's a great thing for a team. What kind of confidence does it give the offense when you have a defense that essentially is just getting opposing teams off the field as quickly right. as possible? Uh, it's awesome. And, you know, uh, like I said, like playing the complimentary football, you know, those guys getting them off the field as, quick, as quickly as they can and then offense having a, a sustained drive and keeping those guys fresh, you know, that's how you go back and forth and mix in with special teams. You know, uh, you keep those guys out there and they do their thing, man. And then they, they get those guys out. We go out there, have drive, they come in fresh. They go out there and make sacks. They make tackle for losses. It's awesome to watch. And, and that's just, that's just goes to show like, um, just how well we're playing together right now. It's a team game, and we're, we're doing that. You said it first. You guys got to see a sneak peek in training camp. Now it's here for the world to see. It's the 49ers defense, your Yahoo fantasy performer of the game. All right, well. 24-hour rule. You guys talk about it all the time. You guys celebrate this win, and now it's time to look forward. Week 8 against the Carolina Panthers. How do you guys plan to kind of keep your foot on the gas as you guys are now 6-0 going into this week? Uh, we just got to take it one day at a time. Uh, you know, uh, next game mentality. Um, so we're going to come in uh, tomorrow. We're going to break down the film and everything. Obviously, they have uh, great players on defense. Um, so we're going to break those guys down. You know, they got uh, McCoy over there. They got Luke Keekley, uh, amazing players. But, um, you know, we have amazing players too. So we're going to take it one day at a time, break down the film, and come in ready to grind out the work. You talk about these amazing players. Gerald McCoy, Bruce Irvin, Brian Burns, also Luke Keekley. We already know what he's capable of. What's the mentality going against this team? Uh, whew, I mean, it's gonna, I mean, obviously a great defense. Um, but, you know, uh, we're going to come in, we're going to do what we do, and we're going to keep do doing what we've been doing. So, I mean, um, try to play complimentary football and, you know, hopefully get the win. There it is. 49ers at home hosting the Carolina Panthers in week eight. The kickoff is at 105 on Fox. But for those who will be here with us, don't worry, I got something for you. At Levi Stadium, our guy right here, okay. George Kittle. First 30,000 fans in attendance will get a George Kittle bobblehead right there. Uh, again, National Tight End Day. Tight ends around the league will be mic'd up. Uh, Kittle's got some surprises coming out on Sunday. Uh, you'll have to catch. Stay tuned to 49ers.com to see what he's got in store for National Tight End Day. He'll be mic'd up, so you know we always get great content <laughs> whenever we're around Kittle. You're around him. How is he? Oh, man, hell of a character. I love that kid. <laughs> man, he's an awesome to play with, awesome to practice with, too. Man, he's a great player. He's a phenomenal player. Great guy, well-deserving. Kittle's ready. I'm going to have to take this one. This one's mine. Guys. That one's yours? All right. <laughs> All right. Lakin's taking it. From us here at 49ers Live, uh, enjoy the rest of your so week. Cool. Enjoy the win, and we'll see Lakin and the rest of you guys on Sunday. <laughs> For real, though, can I take it? <laughs>